Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay, and Palm Olive Shave Creams for a smoother, more comfortable way to shave bring you Our Miss Brooks, transcribed and starring Eve Arden. It's time once again for another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks under the direction of Al Lewis. Well, many people enjoy the brisk, snappy weather of the winter season. But our Miss Brooks, who teaches English at Madison High School, is definitely anti-cold. In fact, at the last count, she was sleeping beneath 11 woolen blankets. I kept warm enough that way, but it posed quite a problem for my landlady. Yesterday, when she came in to wake me up, she couldn't find me. We solved that, though. Now when I go to bed, I slip a bookmark under the bottom blanket. <laughs> Last Friday at breakfast, I was complaining to Mrs. Davis about the temperature in the house Now take this, dear A nice steaming cup of coffee will warm you up in no time Is it really hot? Piping hot Here's your cup Never mind the cup, just pour it over me <laughs> Look, Mrs. Davis, the days aren't so bad But last night at 11.30, my room was absolutely freezing You could hang meat in there <laughs> <laughs> Connie, wouldn't that mess up the wallpaper? <laughs> Besides, 11.30 seems awfully late for you to be up, Connie You'd be a lot warmer if you got to bed earlier I would have, but I had to finish some extra typing for Mr. Conklin Our beloved principal has never been able to keep a secretary, you know I know I think it's a shame the way he takes advantage of you this isn't school business he gives you, is it? No, most, mostly personal correspondence, reports and things. And what does Mr. Conklin give you for this work? An occasional curt nod. <laughs> well, if I were you, I'd refuse to do any more for him. In fact, when you bring him this batch today, you ought to put your foot down. I tried putting my foot down before, Mrs. Davis, but it just didn't work. Why? What did Mr. Conklin do? He stepped on it. <laughs> Good morning, Mr. Conklin. I brought in those papers you had me type last night. Just put them on my desk, please. Hmm? What did you say? Perhaps you'd hear better if you'd remove those ridiculous earmuffs. What? <laughs> oh, these earmuffs. They must have slipped down again. It's terribly chilly in school this morning, Mr. Conklin. Nonsense. It's just pleasantly brisk. Now, about these papers... Why, Miss Brooks, you're familiar with the rules of this institution. Why are you smoking in school? I'm not smoking. That's my breath. <laughs> Your breath? Yes, condensing in the pleasantly brisk air. <laughs> Mr. Conklin, are you sure there's enough coal in the furnace this morning? Well, of course. The janitor has been authorized to burn 37 lumps before noon. <laughs> But, sir, this is going to be an exceptionally cold day, and 37 lumps of coal just won't get the job done. Uh, perhaps you're right. I'll contact the furnace room. Hand me the phone, please. Here you are, sir. Osgood Conklin to maintenance. Osgood Conklin to maintenance. Fire lumps 38 and 39. <laughs> Fire lumps 38 and 39. That is all. <laughs> ah, that should do it. Now, let's see those papers. Here they are, Mr. Conklin. I stayed up until 11.30 last night, so I'd have them finished for you. Well, I'm not unmindful of your labors in my behalf, and I want you to know that your efforts will not go unrewarded. In fact, because of your fine spirit of cooperation, I have selected you as the one who will be permitted to type up my new report to the Board of Education. I'm sorry, Mr. Conklin, but teaching English is a full-time job for me, and I just can't assume any extra duties. But somebody's got to do it. Miss Enright just turned me down, too. As a matter of fact, she's the one who suggested you for this honor. Oh, she did, did she? Well, let uh, me you tell you... You shouldn't Mr. speak harshly of your fellow English teacher, Miss Brooks. After all, Miss Enright is quite fond of you. Fond of me? Oh, she must be to pass such a nice compliment about you this morning. She said she considered you one of her oldest friends. She did? 
And then she said she likes you as well as some of her younger friends. <laughs> well, I can't force you to perform this trifling task for me, so you might as well run along to your classroom. Yes, sir, but as far as Miss Enright is concerned, careful, I would like careful, to... Oh, Miss Brooks, you're speaking of a teacher who may soon be head of the English department. What? The position is still open, you know, and for months now I've been grooming Miss Enright. Good. That should make her coat nice and shiny. <laughs> Miss Brooks, are you inferring that Miss Enright is a horse? If the shoe fits, nail it on her. <laughs> Pardon me, Mr. Boynton, but I've got a free period right now, and as I recall, so have you. Oh, that's right, Miss Brooks. Is there anything I can do for you? I'd love to. That is, uh... <laughs> The real reason I dropped in here was to get away from my own classroom for a while. Sometimes I wonder if all this effort is worth anything. If I couldn't expend all this time and energy in another direction. Say, making a pleasant home for some man. The way any normal woman does. Well, you're certainly normal, Miss Brooks. Your muscular structure's good. You have a well-shaped skull. <laughs> Good sound bones. And judging from your complexion, I should say your systolic circulatory system is A1. <laughs> you romantic fool, you. I wish I felt as well as your description, though. I've got a little headache from all the paperwork I've been doing. A headache? Would you like me to massage your temples a bit? That's the quickest you've ever caught on. <laughs> Please do, Mr. Boynton. All right. How does this feel? Just wonderful, Mr. Boynton. Yoo-hoo, anybody in here? Nobody but us guinea pigs. <laughs> well, it's Miss Enright. Miss Brooks has a little headache. I'm just massaging her temples. Oh, how humane of you. <laughs> Oh, there you go with your jokes, Miss Enright. <laughs> You're just loads of fun. Don't you think so, Miss Brooks? She's the biggest load I've ever seen. <laughs> well, Miss Brooks, I didn't expect to find you here. I just dropped in because I'm worn out from my morning classes. Sometimes I just don't know where I get the fuel to keep running. If you didn't race your engine so much, your tank wouldn't get so low. <laughs> that, that's a good one, too. You girls have a lot of fun with each other, don't you? Yes. Yes, we do enjoy our little fencing matches. When we're not too tuckered out from our work, that is. Oh, that English class of mine. Well, I must say, I don't know what's come over you women of today. You just don't seem to have the vitality and drive of our forebears. Now, take my Aunt Maddie, for example. She taught English, but she also taught mathematics, history, science, and Latin. Five subjects? Certainly. And then she'd go home and keep house for her husband and nine children. Nine children? What did she teach, night school? <laughs> you, you can jest if you want to, but if I found a woman like my Aunt Maddie, a, a woman who held the secret to diversified interests, I'd marry her tomorrow. If you'll excuse me now, I've got a million papers to correct. <laughs> and I'd better be running along, too. I've got to empty several waste baskets. Uh, but, but ladies, Goodbye, I... Goodbye, Mr. Boynton. See you later, nephew. Uh, what is it you wanted to see me about, Miss Brooks? It's my work here at school, Mr. Conklin. I was wondering if you could give me another subject or two to teach. Miss Brooks, have you been sniffing too much eraser dust? <laughs> no, sir. It's just that I'd like to diver diversify my interests. Another class would be a labor of love. Oh, pardon me, Mr. Conklin. Oh, uh, hello, Miss Enright. Oh, Miss Brooks. What happened to those millions of papers you had to mark? I threw them in those wastebaskets you had to empty. <laughs> I'm uh, rather busy this morning, Miss Enright. What's on your mind? Well, Mr. Conklin, I've been thinking about my schedule here, and I've come to the conclusion that I could take on another subject. You too? 
But not two hours ago, you both complained about how rigorous your duties were. That was B.A.M., Mr. Conklin, before Aunt Mattie. <laughs> you might consider it strange, sir, but On I... the contrary, and it's an extremely fortuitous coincidence. I was planning to institute a course in business administration at Madison. My big problem, however, has been instructors. There are none available in this area. Uh, there are now. I mean, there is now. I'll take a shot at it. Yes, sir. You bet. Sure thing. <laughs> <laughs> Not so fast, darling. Mr. Conklin, if you're interested in a business administration course, I'd like to point out that I've got a terrific background. That you don't have to point out. <laughs> Maybe you ought to sell your bicycle. Yeah. <laughs> please, please, Miss Brooks, please. Tell me about your experience, Miss Enright. Well, before I came to Madison High as an English teacher, I assisted Papa in his business. Papa was the head of a big collection agency at the time. I assisted my Papa, too, Miss Enright. What did he do? He spent most of his time hiding from your papa. <laughs> Please, Mr. Conklin, I'll admit I'm not overly familiar with the principles of business administration, but I'll study it thoroughly in the next few days. Uh, Miss Brooks, business administration is a three-year course. How do you propose to learn it in a few short days? I'll only take a half hour for lunch. <laughs> I'm afraid you have none of the qualifications for this position, Miss Brooks. Once again, it looks like Miss Enright has the inside track. Well, all I can say is, don't bet too much on her nose. It might still be a photo finish. Brush your teeth with Colgate. Colgate Dental Cream, it cleans your breath. What a toothpaste. What a cleans your teeth. Colgate toothpaste. Cleans your breath. What a toothpaste. What a cleans your teeth. Colgate Dental Cream cleans your breath while it cleans your teeth. And the Colgate way stops tooth decay best. Yes, the Colgate way is the most thoroughly proved and accepted home method of oral hygiene known today. Over two years' research showed brushing teeth right after eating with Colgate Dental Cream helps stop more decay for more people than ever before reported in dentifrice history. The Colgate way stop tooth decay best. No other dentifrice, ammoniated or not, offers such conclusive proof. And you should know that Colgate's, while not mentioned by name, was the only toothpaste used in the research on tooth decay recently reported in Reader's Digest. So always follow the Colgate way to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and stop tooth decay best. Brush your teeth with Colgate. Colgate Dental Cream, it cleans your breath. What a toothpaste. Why it cleans your teeth. And the Colgate way stops tooth decay best. <laughs> Mr. Conklin seemed convinced that I didn't know a thing about business administration, and it looked like he was right. I had just about given up on the biggest deal of my life, 200 pounds of prime biology teacher. <laughs> when lunch period came, I must have looked pretty down in the mouth as I entered the school cafeteria. Get it up, Miss Brooks. Your chin is sweeping the floor. <laughs> Oh, hello, Walter. I do feel a bit grim today. Well, suppose you sit down over here and tell our favorite pupil all about it. And that is, unless you're waiting for Mr. Boynton. No, he had to go down to the biology supply house. They're having a sale on used guinea pigs or something. <laughs> oh, it shouldn't make you this depressed. Gosh, you look like you're just about to bawl. What's the cause of it? Well, I spent about ten minutes in Mr. Conklin's office this morning. Say no more. Here's my hanky. <laughs> Mr. Conklin's the best cure I know for anybody who's got a slight case of cheerfulness. Not so loud, Walter. His daughter's about to join us. Hello, Miss Brooks. Walter. Hello, Harriet. We were just chatting about your daddy. Yeah. Why isn't the old... Why isn't he in the cafeteria today? <laughs> I brought a sandwich to his office. He's calling the various oil companies to see if he can't beat the price raise. It seems fuel oil for our furnace at home has gone up three cents a gallon. 
Daddy has a big problem with oil every winter. We have a big problem with Daddy every winter. <laughs> you probably don't know anything about this, Harriet, but I've been hoping your father would appoint me as instructor in business administration. He did mention something about the course, Miss Brooks, but he hasn't said who's going to teach it, so you might as well keep hoping. I'm going to get myself some dessert. Can I bring you something, Miss Brooks? No, thanks, dear. I'm pretty full. I've been biting my lips all morning. <laughs> Things could always be worse. See you later, Walter. Okay, pigeon. Now then, Miss Brooks, give me your undivided attention. You've got it, Walter. While you and Harriet were yakking it up, I was thinking, if Mr. Conklin could get the oil he wants for his furnace not only three cents cheaper, but nine cents below the current price, and if this transaction was put over by you, he'd consider that you had a pretty good business head on your shoulders. Well, I guess he would be. Instead of thinking what he thinks now, that it's just a bunch of pretty auburn hair clinging to a vacant bulb. <laughs> now, just a minute, Walter. <laughs> Please, I'm not finished. It so happens that my dad has a good pal in the Ajax Oil Company, and we get all our fuel wholesale. Now... There's no reason why I can't get some for you to give to Mr. Conklin, thus helping you wrap up the job you want. Walter, I'd like to take this opportunity to apologize here and now for everything I've ever thought about you. This is a great idea. Thank you. Uh, we'll get the oil to Mr. Conklin's home right after school. But there's one question I'd like to ask you, Miss Brooks. Why are you so anxious to take on the added duties of another course? I can answer that in two simple words, Walter. Philip Boynton. I'm glad you got home from school early today, Daddy. But why did we come down here to the basement? I wanted to show you our new furnace, Harriet. It was installed just ten minutes ago. But what's this pink ribbon tied on it for? And what's this card on top of it? It's a little surprise for your mother. Read the card, Harriet. Let's see. It says, to my loving wife, Martha. Happy Lincoln's birthday, darling, from your Osgood. You bought Mother a furnace for Lincoln's birthday? Nothing's too good for your mother, Harriet. <laughs> Besides, it's my way of making up for Christmas. I got the feeling that your mother was not too delighted with the gift she received from me at that time. I can't understand it. It was a lovely case of club soda. <laughs> Mother was expecting a fur coat this winter. Then she should be doubly pleased. A furnace is even warmer than a fur coat. Especially this brand new forced air furnace. It uses gas and a blower system. And all it requires is for me to flip open a vent and presto, any room I'm in is full of hot air. <laughs> no comment, Daddy. <laughs> Quiet with that oil drum, Walter. I don't want Mr. Conklin to know we're in his basement. Well, I still don't see why we didn't just roll the drum up to his front door. Because I want to surprise him. We'll pour the oil right into the furnace. Then, when he can't understand how he's getting heat without having bought any oil, I'll flash this bill from the Ajax company showing that I've beaten the current price by nine cents. I get it. And then when Mr. Conklin reacts according to plan, he'll put you in charge of the business administration course. Mr. Boynton will admire your energy and diversified talents. And before you know it, you'll be married and have nine children like his Aunt Maddie. <laughs> Walter, have you been drinking this oil? <laughs> Uh, Miss Enright, your coming to my home on your own time to discuss our new business administration course has made quite an impression on me. Thank you, Mr. Conklin. But I've always been a firm believer in the old adage, don't put off until tomorrow what you can do today. My sentiments exactly. Now, if you'll just give me your coat, we'll sit down in the living room and chat for a while. Oh, I think I'll keep my coat on, Mr. Conklin. I feel a bit chilly. Oh, as you wish. Mrs. Conklin is out shopping at the moment, but when she comes back, she'll fix a bit of tea for us. I can't wait to see her face when she discovers her gift. Oh? What did you buy for Mrs. Conklin? In honor of Lincoln's birthday, I bought her a brand new furnace. <laughs> I haven't used it as yet, but I think I'll turn it on right now. 
Yeah, oh, oh, excuse me, Miss Enright. I'll see who's at the door. Oh, oh, it's you, Miss Brooks. Yes, sir. I came by to discuss that new teaching job. But I've just about decided on Miss Enright for that position, Miss Brooks. Please, sir, what I have to tell you may change that decision. I'll just take a few moments of your time. Oh, very well, then. Come in. Come in. Now, uh, please be brief, Miss Brooks. Miss Enright and I have many matters to discuss. Yes, sir. Oh, hello, Miss Enright. Hello, Miss Brooks. Did you come by to show me what a good loser you are? I'll deal with you when you slither into school tomorrow. <laughs> right now, I've got some business with Mr. Conklin. You see, sir, I've always been a firm believer in the old adage, don't put off until tomorrow what you can do today. A salty cliché if I ever heard one. <laughs> Please come to the point. Yes, sir. Mr. Conklin, what would you say if I told you that I was going to put $8.95 into your pocket this minute? I'd say sit down, Miss Brooks. <laughs> Mr. Conklin, I'm going to put $8.95 into your pocket this minute. Sit down, Miss Brooks. Thank you. <laughs> now, in this transaction... Pardon me, but isn't it awfully chilly in here? For once, we're on the same side. It might be a very jolly thought to turn on your furnace, Mr. Conklin, and burn some nice, cheap oil. I don't have any oil in my furnace. However, if you ladies are cold, I should be happy Excuse to... Excuse me, Daddy, mm -hmm. but I've got to talk to Miss Brooks privately right away. Will you kindly step out into the hall with me, Miss Brooks? Harriet, you know my house rules about disturbing adult conversations? It's terribly personal, Daddy, and it'll just take a second. Sounds important, Harriet. I'll be right back, Mr. Conklin. Meanwhile, I'm sure Miss Enright can regale you with some brilliant yakety-yak. It's happened, Miss Brooks. Daddy's done the worst possible thing that could happen. He signed on for another year at Madison High? <laughs> <laughs> no, he bought Mother a furnace for a Lincoln's birthday gift. He must have gotten his rebate on the club soda bottles. <laughs> you don't understand. I just saw Walter Denton in the basement. He was washing his hands in the sink down there. Sounds like a reasonable place. <laughs> he told me you put oil in the furnace. That's right, to surprise your father. You'll surprise him, all right. He bought a gas-operated forced air furnace. <laughs> what? Oh, this is terrible. We've got to work fast, Harriet. You run down to the basement and tell Walter to get some tubing and siphon that oil out of the furnace at once. Okay, Miss Brooks. And you go on in and keep Daddy's mind occupied so he doesn't turn it on until I come back with the all clear. All right, Harriet. Now, for heaven's sakes, hurry. I'm dashing this minute. Good luck, Miss Brooks. I'll need it. Well, Miss Brooks, has my daughter concluded her personal business with you? Yes, sir. It was nothing, really. Uh, now then, about this business transaction of yours. Boy, uh, it's sure hot in here. <laughs> hot? I'm terribly warm. Do your lips always turn blue when you're warm? <laughs> I'm still shivering, Mr. Conklin. Well, I've got high blood pressure, so I'm usually warmer than the average person, but I'll turn the heat up if you want me to, Miss Enright. No! <laughs> I mean, why turn on the heat? Too much heat isn't... isn't... Ouch! Healthy. <laughs> Bless you, darling. I must have sat in a hot draft. <laughs> now, about the $8.95 I saved you, Mr. Conklin... Oh, excuse me one moment. I'm going to see if my new thermostat is accurate. I want everything to be just right when Mrs. Conklin comes home. First, I'll open the large vent in this wall. Now, we'll just set this thermostat for 76 degrees. That should get the furnace going rather quickly. Oh, it can't warm up quickly enough for me. It can for me. Excuse me, Mr. Conklin. Uh, where are you going, Miss Brooks? Into the coat closet. I have a roll of film that needs developing. <laughs> oh, stop that idiotic jabber and let's get down to cases now. Perhaps we should set the thermostat up to 80 or so, then the furnace will really get going. Here, I'll do it. But, Miss Enright, It's all I... right, it's all right, Miss Brooks. I want to see how the new furnace reacts. Here, I'll turn it up to 85 degrees. <laughs> ah, yeah, now, now it's starting. Listen to the lovely sound of that nice hot air scurrying up the pipe. Here, here, I'll turn it off. I'll turn it. 
Oh. <laughs> oh, my suit. Oh, my dress. Oh, my neck. <laughs> what happened to my brand new furnace? This entire room is full of oil. What do we do? Well, we could toss a giant salad. <laughs> Practical suggestion is to clean up. Something must have gone wrong when I... Holy cow! What are you people doing in here? Rehearsing for a minstrel show? <laughs> you guessed it, Walter. And I don't know about anybody else, but if the interlocutor will excuse me, I, for one, am going to pick up my tambourine and beat it. <laughs> returns in just a moment. But first, men, does your face do a slow burn every time you shave? Then it's time you heard the good news about smoother, more comfortable shaves, the Palm Olive Shaving Cream Way. That's right, smoother, more comfortable shaves. And men, only Palm Olive, no other shaving cream, offers you real proof, not just promises, of smoother, more comfortable shaves. For the new Palm Olive Shaving Cream Way gets beards really soft and it provides a protective film that actually floats your razor's cutting edge. Yes, even in cold or hard water, you get a clean, close shave every time. Super smooth, super comfortable. Over 2,500 men tested palm olive shaving creams thoroughly. They followed the simple directions on the tube, and no matter how they shaved before, three out of four reported beards easier to cut, less razor pull, more comfortable, actually smoother shaves. Get Palm Olive shaving cream, lather or brushless. See if you don't get that super smooth, super comfortable, free and easy shave you've always wanted. You owe it to your face to try Palm Olive lather or brushless. Remember, only Palm Olive, no other shaving cream, offers you proof of smoother, more comfortable shaves. And now, once again, here is our Miss Brooks. Well, Walter Denton was just about to spill the beans to Mr. Conklin about my part in the great oil scandal, when luckily I managed to catch his eye. And through some magical current that seemed to flow between us, his lips were suddenly sealed. Then I took my knuckles out of his mouth, and we cleaned up... <laughs> <laughs> After that, Walter took me home, and when we got to the door, he said, Gosh, Miss Brooks, do you think you may still get a crack at that business administration course? I don't know about the business, business administration, Walter, but if he finds out about today, it's a cinch we'll both get the business. <laughs> this is Burns Press reminding you to tune in next week to another Our Miss Brooks show, brought to you by Palm Olive Shave Cream for a smoother, more comfortable way to shave and Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay. Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden, is produced by Larry Burns, written by Al Lewis, with the music of Wilbur Hatch. Ladies, now with new improved Vell, V-E-L, you can save 90% of dishwashing work. Just soak dishes in Vell suds a while. Dishes and glassware will soak sparkling clean. No washing, no wiping, no scouring with Vell. Only the stickiest dishes need just the touch of a cloth. Rinse, and they'll gleam without wiping. Soak pots and pans in Vell suds, too. And most of them will get shiny clean without scouring. What's more, Vell is extra mild to hands. So get new Vell. Save 90% of dishwashing work. Be sure to listen to Mr. and Mrs. North every Tuesday night on this same station and be with us again next week at the same time for another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks. Bob Lamont speaking. This program was transcribed. Stay tuned now for Jack Benny. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.